we can generalize the idea of double integrals into triple integrals. For the proof, please check the recorded lecture posted on Canvas for you. There are many reasons that you're interested in using triple integrals over double integrals. For example, if you have the following scenario, evaluate the iterated integral for function t x, y, and z equals to z over the region E, which is defined as solid tetrahedron bounded by four planes One of them is x equal to zero. The other guy is y equal to zero. Then you have z equal to zero and also x plus y plus z equals to one. Very good. So we're gonna evaluate iterated integral. This is the function that you have, z, and you are bounding that function to the following region, which is a solid tetrahedron, also bounded by four plates. Very good. So how do we calculate the iterated integral? This is an example where you're going to use a triple integral instead of using a double integral. Here you have three different variables, x, y, and z that all play in calculating, evaluating the iterated integral. So you're going to set a triple integral, okay? Triple integral for each of the variables. Your function is z, and here, instead of having dA, you're going to use dv. Okay. So now let's analyze what do we have here? How do we set the order? Is it dx, dy, dz? Or is it dy, dx, dz? Or is it dz, dx, dy? Which scenario is this over region E? So what's the base look like? In 3D, in three dimension, you have a tetrahedron, am I right? So if you try to approximately graph this tetrahedron bounded to this planes. These are the things that you have. Here you have x plus y plus z equals to one, All right? So it means that your z is one minus x minus y. So to graph this plane, if x is equal to, for example, uh, zero, you have z equals to one minus y. If y is equal to zero, you have one minus x. If both x and y's are equal to zero, you have z equals to one. Very good. So let's graph this plane first, some part of this plane intersecting x, y, and z. So this is this guy here. This is this guy. Very good. At the same time, it's intersecting y equal to zero. It means that you have x z plane. You have z equal to zero. Well, it means that you have x y plane. And this is what you're trying to work with. This is a solid tetrahedron. All of the 
inside are included as well. Well, what is the base look like? Remember that you focus on finding the base because it helps you to set for dx and dy, how x is changing, how your y is changing. This part is the base in x, y plane, right? No color markers helps to graph this a little bit easier, visualize this a little bit easier. So in x, y plane, here you have your x, here you have your y. Your z is equal to zero. You're dealing with x plus y equals to one, or y equals to one minus x, which is just this length here. This is x plus y equals to one. So here you have your base. So let me use the same color. Y is equal to one minus X. So as you can see, your X is bounded between zero and one, and your Y is bounded between zero and one minus X. So this is my base. I have everything that I need to set this triple integral. X is bounded between zero and one. Y is bounded between zero and one minus X. What about my Z? Z from below is bounded by zero, as you can see, and from above is bounded by this ceiling, which is one, this, you know, slanted ceiling, which is Z equals to one minus X minus Y. So take a look. I'm going to start by having the inner integral with respect to Z. Why? Because Z depends on X and Y. Zero, one minus X minus Y. Then, I'm going to switch to y because y is dependent on x. So dy. y is bounded between 0 and 1 minus x. And finally, my dx, since x is fixed between two fixed values, my last, my outer integral depends on x. So let's take the integral one by one. The inner integral first. So this guy becomes integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to 1 minus x, and this is just a half z squared. z is bounded between 0, 1 minus x minus y, then dy, then dx. dy, dx. So here you just need a simple substitution. This is the integral 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x, here you have a half, one minus x minus y to the second dy dx. You can take this a half and write it in front of your integral for simplicity. So this guy becomes a half integral zero to one. And here you have, so you're taking the integral with respect to y and y. Well, here you can use substitution can say that, hey, my u is 1 minus x minus y. So dy is this, this is 0, this is 0, this is negative dy. So as long as you have a negative sign, you should be fine with this. You get 1 minus x minus y to the third times a third. And my y is bounded between 0 to 1 minus x dx. Perfect. So let's substitute these and try to simplify. This guy is negative uh, six. So I'm just multiplying these two, zero to one. So if I substitute one minus X, I get one minus X minus one plus X to the third minus. Now if I plug in zero, I get one minus X to the third and then the X. Very good. So far, everything looks good. I have negative one over six, integral zero to one, and we can cancel out these two. And this is just zero. So you end up with another negative sign. So it becomes positive one minus X to the third dx. Again, 
we can use u sub as well. u is one minus x. The u is negative dx. So again, we're going to add another negative sign and a negative sign here. And remember, just I had a negative sign. That's why you, you are able to use the u, u sub here. And this guy becomes negative one over six, one fourth, negative one minus x to the fourth, x ranges between zero and one. Let us do the substitution. So here you have negative one over 24. And if you plug in one, it's zero minus one. So it becomes one over 24. One over 24 is the iterated integral, triple integral value here. 